You're watching the Physics Classroom's video tutorial on electric circuits. The topic of this video is parallel circuit relationships, and we want to know what are the important mathematical patterns and relationships associated with parallel circuits, and how do we use such relationships. I'm Mr. H. Let's get started. In a previous video, this one, I did a comparison of parallel and series circuits. I left a link to that video in the description section of this one. A parallel circuit is defined as a circuit in which there are multiple pathways by which charge can traverse the circuit. They're characterized as having branches with the resistors present within the branches. Any charge that leaves the terminal of the battery will eventually come to a node, and at that node it will pick one of three pathways, go through a resistor within that branch, and return to the negative terminal of the battery. There are multiple pathways here. A series circuit, in contrast, has only one pathway by which charge can move around the circuit. Any charge that leaves the terminal of the battery will pass through the first, the second, and the third resistor on its way back to the battery. We've already discussed series circuits, and I've left a link to that video in the description section of this one. Our focus in this video is on parallel circuits. Parallel circuits have this unique feature that as you increase the number of resistors within the circuit, you actually decrease the overall resistance. This causes an increase in the amount of current within the circuit. Another unique feature is that if you were to unscrew a bulb from one of its sockets, the other bulbs will still light because they're present within their own branch independent of the branch where the bulb was removed. As in any circuit, charge that passes through the battery of a parallel circuit will undergo a gain in electric potential. And as it passes through one of the resistors, it will undergo a loss in electric potential, which we call a voltage drop. For the circuits shown here, charge moving from location B to location C will undergo a voltage drop and charge moving from location D to location A will undergo the voltage gain. Since charge will only pass through one of these three resistors, there's only one voltage drop. Thus, the volts lost or electric potential loss going from B to C must equal the gain from D to A. We can express this in terms of an equation that looks like this. The delta V of the battery, that's the gain, is equal to the voltage drop across resistor 1, is equal to the voltage drop across resistor 2, and is equal to the voltage drop across resistor 3. Here is a parallel circuit. You'll notice there's three resistors, all in their own branch. And you'll notice there's several points that are labeled. Any charge that leaves the battery at location A will eventually get to location B, and then it will go through one of the three branches, eventually reaching location I and returning to the negative terminal of the battery. In going from B to I, there's only going to be one voltage drop. It's going to be the same for every branch. But that drop does not occur until the charge re reaches the resistor. And so locations C, E, and G are all at the same electric potential as location B and A. And similarly, location D, F, and H are all at the same potential as location I and J, and that's the lowest potential within the circuit. The drops occur when charge goes from C to D, or E to F, or G to H. We often represent these ideas by an electric potential diagram. Here is an electric potential diagram for the circuit diagram that's shown. You'll notice that A, B, C, E, and G are all at high potential, and then the drop occurs as the charge goes through the resistors, such that D, F, H, I, and J are at the low potential location. Because of the branching that occurs in a parallel circuit, the concept of current can be a little tricky. But here's what you need to know. The total flow rate, or current, before every node is equal to the total flow rate after that node. I like to use a water flow analogy to explain. Here's a collection of pipes with meters on various pipes. The water flows in from the top and out the bottom. The top meter reads 100 gallons per minute, or GPM. That water reaches the topmost node and divides into two pathways, a 40 gallon per minute and a 60 gallon per minute pathway. Now that sum of 40 plus 60 is equal to the 100 gallons per minute. The 60 gallons per minute heading off to your right eventually comes to its own node and divides into a 20 gallon per minute and a 40 gallon per minute pathway. Notice once again that the total flow rate after that node, 20 plus 40, equal the total flow rate leading into that node, 60. Eventually, all three pathways come together at the very bottom. The 40 gallons per minute, the 20 gallons per minute, and the 40 gallons per minute meet up and join together, and we get 100 gallons per minute flowing out at the bottom. Now, it works the same way with charge flow rate, which we call current. 
Here's a diagram of a, of a collection of branches for the parallel circuit. You'll notice 14 amps of current are coming in from above and reaching that first node, and then it divides up into branches. You have 3 amps, 5 amps, and 6 amps. The total flow rate of 3 plus 5 plus 6 is equal to 14 amps. The total flow rate after the node is equal to the total flow rate before the node. The same thing is true at the bottom node as 3 amps, 5 amps, and 6 amps gets together to give you 14 amps. We sometimes put it this way, the current outside the branches, which here is 14 amps, equal the sum of the current inside the branches, which is 3 amps plus 5 amps plus 6 amps. As an equation, we'd write the current in the battery, which is outside of the branches, equal I1 plus I2 plus I3, where I1, I2, and I3 equal the branch currents. Consider this circuit diagram. There are four nodes labeled A, B, C, and D. You'll notice the circuit symbol for the battery on the far left. Charge that leaves that battery is flowing at a rate of 12 amps. 12 amps heads into node A. And at node A, 12 amps divides into two pathways, 2 amps and 10 amps pathways. Notice that the flow rate heading into the total flow rate that approaches point A is equal to the sum of the flow rate after point A. Now the 10 amps heads to node B, and at node B it divides into two pathways, into the branch with 4 amps and into the branch with 6 amps. Notice again that the total flow rate heading into B is equal to the total flow rate that exits from B, 10 amps equal 4 amps plus 6 amps. 4 amps and 6 amps finally meet up at location C. And at location C, they've joined together, and we end up with 10 amps that leaves location C. The total flow rate heading into location C equal the total flow rate that leaves location C. And finally, the same thing occurs at location D, where 2 amps coming from above at A meets up with the 10 amps that's coming from location C, and together, 2 amps plus 10 amps joins together to form 12 amps. The 12 amps is the current through the battery outside of the branches, and the sum of all the currents within the branches are 2 amps plus 4 amps plus 6 amps. One can calculate the current using the delta V equal I times R relationship. Rearrange, that's I equal delta V divided by R. The delta V is the same for every branch. It's simply the voltage of the battery. The R varies branch to branch. One would reason that the branch that has the smallest resistance in it would be the one that has the greatest current, and the branch that has the largest resistance would have the smallest current. Let's try an example. Here's a 12 volt battery with three resistors connected to it in parallel. The first resistor has a resistance of 2 ohms, followed by 6 ohms, followed by 4 ohms. We want to find the currents. In the first branch, I'm going to go I1 equal 12 volts divided by the 2 ohms. I get 6 amps from the current. In the middle branch, I'm going to go I equal 12 volts divided by 6 ohms, and I get 2 amps from my current. And in branch number 3, I'm going to go delta V 12 volts divided by the 4 ohms, and I get 3 amps. The equivalent resistance of a multiple resistor circuit is simply the amount of resistance that a single resistor would have to have in order to match the effect of the collection of resistors. If you happen to have two 4 ohm resistors in parallel to one another, only one half of the charge is going to go through that 4 ohm resistor. So as far as the battery is concerned, it's as though there's only a single 2 ohm resistor standing out there in the external circuit. If you had two 6 ohm resistors, half the charge goes through each of the 6 ohm resistors, the battery feels an overall resistance of 3 ohms. And 10 ohm resistors, two of them in parallel, would be like having a single 5 ohm resistor. Two 12 ohm resistors like having a single 6 ohm resistor. Now this works pretty good if the two resistors have the same resistance. But if they don't have the same resistance, we need a more sophisticated formula. For parallel circuits, calculating the equivalent resistance demands that we use this formula. Now the formula states that the reciprocal of the equivalent resistance is equal to the sum of the reciprocals of each resistor's value. So what I would need to do is substitute in all resistance values, R1, R2, R3, into the right side of the equation and find out what that's equal to. When I find out what it's equal to, I have to know that's not my equivalent resistance. That's 1 divided by my equivalent resistance. So now what you need to do is take the reciprocal of that to get the value for the equivalent resistance. Let's see how it works. And we'll start with one we've already done, because we did 4 ohms plus 4 ohms on the previous slide. We knew it was 2 ohms, but when we use the equation, 1 over 4 plus 1 over 4, just do that on your calculator. That comes out to be 1 over 2, or 0.5. 
Now take the reciprocal of 0.5 and you get 2.0. The next one we also did on the previous slide, you'll notice 1 over 12 plus 1 over 12 comes out to be 0.16666 repeating. The reciprocal of that ends up being 6 ohms. Now here's one we didn't do. Three 12 ohm resistors in parallel. Using the formula, you'd evaluate the right side, 1 divided by 12 plus 1 divided by 12 plus 1 divided by 12, and it comes out to be 0.25. That's the right side of this equation. Now take the reciprocal of that, and that comes out to be 4, and that's your equivalent resistance. All right, here's one you can never do without your formula. So 2 ohms plus 3 ohms plus 4 ohms, what is that when placed in parallel? So you're going to go 1 over 2 plus 1 over 3 plus 1 over 4. You're going to evaluate the right side of the equation. It comes out to be 1.083. Now that's not equivalent resistance, that's 1 divided by it. So now go 1 divided by 1.083 on your calculator, and you get 0.92 as the equivalent resistance. Now again, another practice problem for you. Try this yourself on your calculator. Find out what the right side of the equation is. Then take the reciprocal of it. Take your time. You should get 1.75. Now what we notice when we, when we inspect the last column for equivalent resistance and compare it to the first three columns, is we notice that in all cases the equivalent resistance is always less than the smallest of the, sm of the smallest resistance value. And that makes sense because if you were to add another resistor in a branch, it must make the total resistance go down. So that total or equivalent resistance will always be less than the smallest of resistance values. This is the first of two concept questions we're going to go over, and it pertains to the parallel circuit with three light bulbs. We're told the light bulbs are identical, which means they have the same resistance value. We know for parallel circuits that the voltage drop across each light bulb is the same. So the same voltage drop, the same resistance means the same current in every branch, and the question is all about current. We wish to know which one of these six statements here is true. And we, in order to do so, we need to know that what's happening in every node is that the current is either divided or rejoining, and we need to know that the total current before the node is equal to the total current after the node. Let's go through one by one. Beginning with A, the current at Y is greater than the current at Q. So Y is in one of the branches, and Q is at a point where the current that flows through it is feeding two of the branches. So that would have a greater current if it's feeding two branches as opposed to just one branch. Uh, B, the current at Y is greater than the current at P, and, and that's even worse, even more false, because P is feeding three branches and, uh, and, and Y is in a single branch. C, the current at Y is greater than the current at Z, and I'm looking and they're both a point in a branch, so they're going to have the same current, and that's a false statement. Let's look at D. The current at P, which is feeding three branches, is greater than the current at Q, which is a point that's feeding two branches. And so we could say that's the true statement. It's, it's greater at P than it is at Q. E would have to be false if, if D is true, because it's the opposite. And F claims that the current's the same in all locations, and it certainly isn't. So our answer here is D. In this last question, I want to know which one of the following six changes would increase the current at location X in this circuit that is a three ball parallel circuit. So I'm looking so I need to know that the current in any one of the branches is simply the battery voltage divided by the resistance of the branch and that the current outside the branches like at location X is equal to the sum of the current in the branches. So anything that I can do to increase the current in a branch will increase the current at location X and that would be an answer to this question. So let's go through our six options and pick all that apply. If I increase the resistance of one of the bulbs or two of the bulbs, what I would be doing is decreasing the current within that branch according to this formula right here. So none of those work. I can rule out A and B right away. If I decrease the resistance of a bulb or two of the bulbs, as in choice C, that would be great because it would increase the current in that particular branch and that adds to the current at location X. So that's C is one of my options. Increase the voltage of the battery. Doing that means that the current in each one of the branches is going to increase and that's good for increasing the current allocation X. So pick D as well. Decrease the voltage. Now we already determined you have to increase it. And finally, if I were to remove one of the bulbs from the branches, then what I would be doing is reducing the overall current because as you increase the number of bulbs or branches, you increase the current. If you decrease the number of branches, you decrease the current. Don't pick that one. Our answer is C and D. 
It's at this time in every video that I like to help you out with an action plan, a series of next steps for making the learning stick. But before I help you out, could you help us out by giving us a like, subscribing to the channel, or leaving a question or comment in the comment section below. Now for your action plan. Here are four resources you'll find on our website, and I've left links to each in the description section of this video. You have two Minds on Physics mission, and I really recommend mission EC8, a concept builder that gets to some of the mathematical practice. You have a simulation where you can change a variable and observe the effect, and a written tutorial page if you need a written reference. Whatever you do, I wish you the best of luck. I'm Mr. H, and I thank you for watching.